Greetings and welcome to In Depth from DK Ronstar. The National Parang Orchestra or Orquesta Nacional de Parang de Trinidad y Tobago, which from now we're going to refer to as ONPAT, sees exponents of the arts from different groupings across the country. Musical director Enrico Camejo, he joins us to share how the group came together, their mission, and when next you can see them in action. Welcome, sir. Thank you for making the time. I know now is a busy time for you. So how are you doing? Yes, I am very a bit tired, but I'm very happy to be here on In Depth DK. So, so happy to speak about our brand new National Parang Orchestra of Trinidad and Tobago. Let me find out about it a little more because um, Parang groups, they've existed for a while. Now, what's the rationale be behind having an orchestra? Well, we have had Parang groups for many years. In fact, um, testimony to that is the National Parang Orchestra, National Parang, Parang Association actually, celebrating 51 years of existence going into 52. And we, we would have had Parang bands before that. And Parang bands would have gone out and represented internationally as well, going as far as Spain and New York, Canada, various places. However, to make the Parang music, I mean, people love it, huh? but to be able to, you know, reach more cultures and, 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 and different places, as well as to be able to try to understand that Parang is not only played at Christmas time, you know, to make it more palatable to the wider audience. Um, the brainstorm, this is the brainstorm of our president, Miss Alicia Jagasa. She had this idea of a orchestra representing our music in a different way. It was just something that she had in mind and she wasn't sure if it could happen. And in March 19, like, oh my goodness, I'm making it seem like it's so old. In March 2021, we met um, myself and Mikhail Carter, who is my assistant musical director, and we decided that we wanted to bring in uh, chamber instruments like the violin, the flute, um, brass instruments, different sections of the orchestra and form this um, fusion with the indigenous parang instruments like the quattro, mandolin, box bass, and so on. Well, it's, one thing, it's one thing to say, okay, well, yes, we're going to use the chamber instruments and we're going to fuse them with things that already are <laughs> instruments that are associated with parang. But how do you go about choosing the amount of persons playing, okay, we want this amount of people on violin, we want this amount of people on mandolin, box bass, percussion, etc. What's that process like? Yes, it is indeed a, a very um, tenuous process, but at the beginning, we wanted to see who firstly was interested. So we had an interview over, that spanned over two days where um, many musicians of different disciplines came to audition, whether it would be, whether it would be a parent instrument or um, chamber instruments or orchestral instruments, you know? And we had over 40 people come in. And at the end of it, when we chose the, 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 the first set, it was composed of one trumpet, <laughs> just one trumpet, two flautists, two pan, three violins, along with a whole myriad of um, of different parang instruments, including scratch and so. And so what I, what I will say is that the first instance, it was more on who would have been interviewed, would have been interviewed. Now, now that we know the song, we could now increase the number and we could now go with more brass, more woodwinds, you know, and make this thing sound even bigger. Because I will tell you, the first time we played together as a unit, the first time, the sound was amazing. And even those naysayers that were saying that it wouldn't work, they bought into the pie one time, and the support was amazing after that first rehearsal in March 2021. It's one thing to say, okay, well, there may be naysayers, there may be other persons. So they're not naysayers, but they're at the same time, they wondered, how is this thing going to work? And I think <laughs> with that, it's so important to have the, the right persons at the, at the helm of it. Now, you spoke about your assistant director. Give me a little idea about the arranger and the conductor to the to part at this point in time. Thank you. 
Right. Well, our arranger, we have none other than Mr. Julio Torres, who is who has been arranged from the beginning, and still we still consider him our arranger, even though myself and Michael Carter also does arrangement. Um, so Julio Torres, you may you may not know the name, but you would hear the mandolin. He is the one who put on the mandolin for Under Parandero and that whole album with Tocadores. He has been a musical director with Alumnos in San Juan for a time and so forth and so on. So we have great people arranging, three of us arranging together. Our conductor or conductress is none other than the, the lady from All Stars now, who just had a wonderful concert um, there in Napa. And of course, Dr. Mia, um, Gormandy. Mia Gormandy Benjamin, that's her name. She um, came in from the very beginning and said that she would be pleased to conduct this first ever fusion of indigenous and classical instruments. Um, she has a lot of experience internationally conducting many orchestras and of course is an advocate for the steel pan as well. So she was a perfect fit for this new fusion. And boy, did she do wonderful when we launched on the 2nd of January of this year at the Naparima Bowl. Now, you, you're saying that, and I think even like those names that you're calling, I think it's so important. Uh, I mean, I would have spoken to it already, but looking at the fact that Mr. Torres would have had that experience with Los Tocadores, and I think Los Tocadores is one of the first set of people, I could be wrong, but it's one of the first set of people, <laughs> I, 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 groups, that would have really incorporated hard and bad that the steel pan. Uh, shout out to Ghostman Ellis, Darren. Um, yes, but, And yes, also yes. looking at the fact that uh, just internationally as well as locally with birdsong, Dr. Mia Gormandy, Benjamin, they have that experience to so be able to meld these things. But we continue the conversation because I want to know some of the yes. main differences, When, but we do that when we return. We're speaking with the director of the National Parang Orchestra, uh, Enrico Camejo. Stay with us, we return with more. Welcome back. We are speaking with Enrico Camejo, director of Onpat. I tell you, I'm not trying that long, the long version again. But and just before we took the break, Enrico, uh, I, yes. think, I think I cut you a little bit because that may actually tie into the question of some of the main differences persons would find with a parent group to the orchestra. And this could be both as a participant in the group as well as somebody who is on looking, taking it in. Yes, indeed, DK. Um... And I can now speak with authority because we would have done this twice where we launched um, on the, the 2nd of January this year. And then on the 30th of April, we also celebrated um, the 50th Jubilee where we had the orchestra um, perform a lot of these songs and even back up one or two of our paranderos while they did their songs. The song is, well, you know the traditional song of a parang group. So, that's beautiful in its own sense and very traditional, very indigenous. With the parang, the, the, the classical instrument, the different sections added, it broadens it so much. I mean, you can imagine an orchestra playing parang music. And I mean, you're still getting the same vibe. And this is what you're getting from Unpat. This is um, for all the songs that we have arranged thus far and performed you are going to feel like it's a mixture of inner and outer heaven. If you look up that, what I mean, it's, 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 you're going to get the, the feel of the parang, and you're going to get that sense that, wow, our music is really international, which it is without even the orchestral instruments. But now it becomes palatable to even those in our society who don't really like parang or to, who don't understand it. I don't think it's that people don't like parang, you know. I think they, they just stereotype it as indigenous. Spanish, they don't do Spanish. Some people sing in nonsense and different things that you, you, you would have had to face over the many years that we've had this art form. But it, it now allows for even the, those who really don't take it on, they have a different air to it. They want to listen, they want more. They, they hear the songs, they know the songs, 
and hearing it in this way, they did not believe that Parang music could sound so quote unquote universal. So it allows us to now to take the, the, the orchestra to different, let's say, um, in the future, we want to go to Latin festivals. We want to bring Latin orchestras down here. We want to do things and we really want to get the word of Parang out there, especially not as a Christmas art form, but something that can be played during the year. You know there's Easter Parang as well. Of course, DK, you must know that. Definitely. But what, yes. and, and I'll, and even, I'll even ask that question though, and do you find individuals in the group finding things a little different, especially if there's an arrangement that is a little different, so we don't sing it so in my you know, or in my group on this song I have the lead, you know. So what does, uh, how do you deal with that in, 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 in on part? The thing is we don't have to because everyone is willing to do their part. The, everyone is humble. Everyone realizes the greatness of what we are doing. They hear it, they feel it, and everyone works together. There is no, there, there's openness of mind. Even from our elder paranderos, who we would say would be set in their ways, they are, they are all are open and are willing to lend a helping hand into the arrangements, into the instruments that could go to, um, to, to play a certain part. To do a certain arrangement and so so so, so there's a there's an excitement about the orchestra there's a, a want to see it do well there's a want for it to expand and to hear the songs that they've been hearing in this parang style on a, a broader spectrum and they are really really open to it there are no there are no there will always be internal squabbles but we always come to a conclusion that everybody accepts and it's you know they're happy with and there's one thing that you mentioned, and in addition to, in, in, within that answer, looking at that kind of blending of older heads, younger ones, blending of generations, yes. passing on experiences, yes. how important is that and having the orchestra oh. be that meeting place where this can take place? That is so important. I will tell you, right now we have some of the elders in the orchestra. Um, we have uh, Mr. Jermaine who plays the double bass and has been around for a, quite a bit. We have other um, men who are leaders of parent groups or who have been in parent groups many eons ago who have been in parent groups for over 20, 30 years who are a part of the orchestra playing along with the other younger paranderos, paranderos and paranderas. And then there are also um, the real young people who are part of Philharmonic Orchestra different chambers, orchestra, chamber orchestras around Trinidad and Tobago, and who are not necessarily part of parent groups, but they are part of symphonies and orchestras, symphon, um, the philharmonics and different things like that. They're all part of these different things in the classical um, arena in Trinidad and Tobago, and are part, and they now are learning the parang music, playing it in their way. The parang people are hearing this thing in a new way, so it, it really is a win-win situation for music on the whole in terms of educating those who have never played parang, those who don't feel they could play parang because they are playing a classical instrument. They are now very you know intrigued to be part of this. It, 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 it's like amazing. And of course, the older heads pass on to the younger ones. And the younger ones enthrall the, the older heads. So it's a, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful mix of Paranderos, classical musicians, you know, it's a, a real, real melting pot here at Unpat. And in terms of that melting pot and that process of just sharing experiences uh, and education, is literacy a part of that too? Because you said, yeah, people coming from chamber music experience, philharmonic experience, is literacy something that you look at as well in the orchestra? You have hit the nail on the head, DK because that now opens up a whole new conversation that we have to have about the mission of UNPAT. And one of the missions is to provide music literacy to our paranderos. So now the same paranderos that are accustomed to playing their music at parang time, at Christmas time, during the parang season, during Easter, during the year, just strumming their quattro, their mandolins, or playing their flutes or so, um, because they may have a wonderful ear. Now, they have an opportunity to learn to read music. And so they have a piece of written score in front of them. And they realize that they are starting to understand the placement of the notes on the, the, the major 
cleft or the base cleft, the, 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 the treble or the base cleft. You're starting to understand um, articulations and expressions to know to how to go softer or even louder, speed up, you know, different things. And they're realizing that music, if they had a block up with, um, about written music, they realize, they're realizing it's not so hard anymore, that, it's, that it really wasn't that hard and that they can follow the music. So they are learning to read music. And as I say, it's a win-win because those students who already could read music are now get into play in different cut times, different Aguinaldo styles of parang, their instruments that they would normally do strict, serious classical music with. They get an opportunity to share, you know, their musical knowledge and to partake and learn about this additional art form that we call parang. It'll be interesting to see how it is the, the, the elders in the art form uh, would look at something like a Latin music festival and stuff when you're able to look and, and recognize that score and be able to translate it, articulate it to your instrument a little differently. But in the last two minutes we have, we didn't ask about contact information wow. and where else we can <laughs> see and where else we can see on Pat. Well, very good. And I, I, as you made that point as well, I, I, I know we only have a bit of two minutes, but in terms of the, the, the vocals, the music, you know, there's some Spanish that's broken. We have an opportunity now to fix it because we have to make it plausible and audible to the other states that listen to Spanish or other Hispanic states around the world. So even that, Unpad is doing that. So now you could contact Unpad through me, musical director, 678-9475. You could also call NPAT. You could email secretarynpat at gmail.com. That's the best thing to do. Secretary, S -S -C -R -E -T -R -Y, NPAT, N P A -T -T at gmail.com. If you are interested in being part of the orchestra or to share music or anything like that, you can email us and we will contact you. Another important point before you go quickly is that now we have an opportunity because we are reading music to produce sheet music for all paradigms, all people who would have wanted a score of music to learn to play a parang song. It allows us to create sheet music and to have it digitally produced as well so you can access it all over the world in time to come. I wonder if that will open the way for crack shots the same way that one person playing in a 3-4 <laughs> uh, steel pan to be able to play a 3-4 param group. But we want to thank you so I much, like Enrico Camejo, <laughs> musical director, La Orquesta Nacional de Parang de Trinidad y Tobago, exactly. getting an idea of what UNPAT is about and how we're taking the thing forward while still paying homage to what has existed. And on behalf of the entire TTT news team, I'm DK Ronster. This has been In Depth With Me. Thank you so much for joining us.